Hi, this is usually how people represent the APQP process. So, in terms of milestones, you have concept initiation and approval, program approval, prototype, pilot run, production launch. All right, so really from zero to uh, to, to 100, if I may say so, uh, up to uh, mass production launch. All right, so and and then you have the activities, planning product design and development, process design and development, product and process validation all the way to production, and of course all along uh, this kind of mechanism, um, the feedback loop, corrective actions when there are issues, uh, basically problem solving, right? Uh, and uh, you can see that it's not planning and then it stops and then product and then it stops and then process and then it stops and then validation and then production, no. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, work in parallel, right? It's not one after the other. And it kind of phases out very often um, like, like this. And then production starts slowly with, uh, for example, when you do a pilot run, it's sort of uh, in between both of them, right? Um, so, you see every time inputs and outputs. So, for example, when you work on concept approval, uh, initiation and approval, you're going to uh, get some inputs, you know, market research, maybe uh, set up a business plan, um, get some, uh, some information from customers, what exactly are they looking for, maybe benchmark data about the competitors, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth, maybe reliability studies about um, a recent product, um, that you launched that was similar, you know, all these kinds of things are the output, uh, sorry, the inputs that go into this uh, this process, right? And then this process has to produce some outputs, which then become the inputs of the next one, right? So uh, the outputs are, hey, what what should the design do? What should it achieve, right? Um, what kind of parts are we going to have, are we going to be looking at? Uh, so let's also start to look at the process. It's not just about the, the product, but also the process. Hey, what kind of processes are we going to need here? What is going to be special, right? Um, based on what the customers want, hey, here's sort of a quality assurance plan already to make sure uh, that we hit on all these important characteristics of the product that they want, and so on. And obviously, the, the management support also to uh, to get through approval here and here, all right? So as, as you work here, you start to generate some outputs that are important for the product and also the process, right? So you design the product, you develop the product, same thing for the process. At the same time, you also design the process and, and, and develop the process. Now, if it's just a um, version three of an existing product with minimum changes, um, this might be a little bit light. If it's really an entirely new product that calls for new processes, then this is going to be okay. This is going to be heavy, and this is going to be very heavy also, right? So much more uncertainty. So that's what you when you really need uh, more of a structured approach to break things down and and give some objectives to the team that's going to work on it, right? So here, what are, what are the outputs of the design and development of the product? Uh, well, uh, a risk analysis on the design, you know, based usually on FMEA, um, verification of, of the design itself. So, um, based on the on, on, on some of the outputs here uh, that became inputs here, what what exactly do the the customers want? Okay, well, does does the design allow us to actually respond favorably to to this? Um, desired characteristics of the product, right? Uh, preliminary bill of material, preliminary um, process flow chart, so we're here at the same time. Really, a lot of this happens at the same time, right? Um, a more in-depth uh, quality assurance plan and um, making sure we have a much better, more in-depth list of special characteristics and, and so on and so forth. Um, and then when you when you when you work here at the process level, uh, the outputs, then um, then it becomes a risk analysis on the process itself, right? You start to actually design 
the processes, you start to have not just a series of steps of what's going to be done, but also um, a risk analysis, as I say, the control plan, um, some instructions, and so on. Right? You're gonna maybe start to uh, to play with it, uh, sort of in a sandbox, and and test some of your assumptions. Uh, you might do some uh, feasibility studies and so on. You might also work on the testing equipment. A lot of people think of processes as just uh, the, the fabrication and assembly processes, but testing and inspection activities are extremely important also. Sometimes it takes a long time also to design testing jigs and things like that. All right? Then you get into the validation. Well, and it takes the outputs of this, this, and, and here, obviously. All of this goes here, and then what you're gonna have, you're gonna have some. Um, you're gonna need some outputs. Um, what well, you, you you start to do some pilot runs, uh, not just one. Typically, uh, if it's for for for, for a new car, um, you you're gonna you're gonna do several runs until you can show that you can produce um, at the right pace. All right, because it's not just about quality; it's also about quantity. If you can produce enough parts for that um, automotive assembly plant well they're going to be shut down it's going to cost uh, an awful lot of money so uh, capacity is also extremely important okay all works hand in hand here it's for quality and capacity so um, you validate the process um, you make some production runs you check quality you check uh, speed and capacity um, uh, you, you you check your measurement system um, you know, gauge R and R and, and these kinds of tools. Um, don't don't forget, of course, the packaging. Make sure it protects the parts and it does whatever it's intended to do. Um, the quality plan has to be really uh, double checked and signed off. Very very important. Okay, and all along also management support, of course, to to keep going. This is an output. There needs to be uh, some reviews. Uh, and, and uh, high-level uh, validation and approval also, right? Uh, that when you are at pilot run here, you still uh, develop your process, right? This is uh, back and forth. We check, we validate, maybe there are some problems, go back here, redevelop something, and uh, redesign, redevelop the process, maybe, and go back and here, and so on. However, at this point, you don't go back to the product. The product uh, design and development has been frozen at one point, right? Same thing here with the plan of the, the concept has to be frozen at one point to really make uh, commitments and more, go much more in depth into these ones, right? And there's really a point where production launch has to happen. Uh, the, 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 if there's 4,000 parts in a car or 6,000 parts and, and your part is late, that, that's not going to be fun. So the, there's a strict, uh, strict deadline here. Okay, to, to really start mass production, and, uh, and and obviously when you get into mass production, um, you, you you're gonna look at your variation of on your critical uh, dimensions and and, and other uh, critical um, uh, critical criteria. Let's say um, you're gonna look at customer satisfaction and, and and returns and all kinds of of, of issues, right? And and this. You know, th th there's a feedback, obviously, all the way through production, and so on. But if at this point you have to go back to uh, process design and development, you have an issue. It means that here, yeah, at the point of the, the pilot run and the handoff, all of this was not done properly. There's a serious problem here, right? Uh, and then uh, planning, well, simply because uh, what's going to be the next, um, maybe the next model, next version, and so on. Right, uh, and and this really follows. You know, production goes all the way off the chart on the right, and this uh, feedback loop, um, corrective action plans, also preventive action, also of course uh, always good, keeps going. Um, you're going to be pressured to give some uh, cost savings every year. Uh, how are you going to to do that? Right? Or well, you're going to have to work on um, on your efficiencies, on your quality, and so on. Right? So these two keep going together in tandem. And that's it. I hope it was clear. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.